does it cost? Let us talk of CBC. Let us talk of uh, the cost of education. Those of us who are seated here, how much do you think it costs to produce one textbook of Braille? Personally, I don't know. But it is in the thousands to produce a textbook of Braille. What can we do as a community to make sure that we can make Braille textbooks affordable for more and more young children in our country? So there are things that are literally under our nose, but we take them for granted. And today, Tessie, you're stepping forward so that you can be able to share with us and jolt our minds so that we can work together. We have lost a lot of time, and sometimes we lose a lot of time dwelling on issues that are actually non-issues. dwelling on issues that are actually non-issues. Yet the very substance of what makes us human is passing us by. So let us stand out, let us come forward as a society, as people, so that we can pull together and work. And personally, Tessie, I'm very proud that you're stepping out and coming out forcefully so that you can, in your own way, Complement other efforts, not necessarily mine, but other efforts by other Kenyans in helping and supporting our society. I had never been to Brazil before. I was there sent by the president to attend the inauguration of uh, um, the swearing-in of the president there, Lula. And one of the things I noticed was that as you enter, as you, as you walk through the airport, all along, I noticed there was some strange path and I was wondering who was designing this. It can trip people and all that. But then I realized it was the footpath or the, the path for the blind. So, in every aspect of the airport, there is actually a path and 
the blind people are taught that if you walk there, you know where you're going. All along, including eventually into the lifts, where the lift, there is braille. So if it is the sixth floor, the blind person knows that this is the sixth floor, and they're there. And I started asking myself, how many of our buildings, our malls, our shopping centers, have we even thought about uh, this kind of thing? We have tended to relegate the issue of disability to a ramp in a building. That all you need is a ramp and you assume that it is disability compliant. Is that true? There's a lot more to be done. I really look forward to the day that I will go and vote and simply go back to my work of the day. There are some countries, even if it is a general election, you will not know that there is a general election. They vote and they continue with their activities. We pray and hope that that will happen here one day that we can vote, finish, then go back to the business of working for the Kenyan people and not live in a cycle of electoral captivity all the time. Traditionally, the spouses of political leaders have always been relegated to one corner and told that you should only appear when there's a ceremony and appear and say nothing and appear and do nothing. Now we are living in a world where that cannot work anymore. We have to go in the right direction and the right direction is to work with our partners to work with the family so that we can also remove this veil that that is a space that is preserved only for show sure. Tessie has stood next to me in times of victory and also in times of loss or defeat. But she has held out firmly, stood firm, and said, at least you are not dead. There will be another day. And this is what has kept us going. So, she has been active in uh, a lot of charity work. She has championed a lot about medical programs. She'll speak for herself on some of them. She has been involved in a lot of charitable work. She has paid medical expenses for many, many people, especially cancer victims, whether it is at Kenyatta Hospital or elsewhere. I know she has been at it. Sometimes I've even asked her, where are you getting the money? And she says, my initiative and my talks to other people is enabling me to do that. Ushiriki Wema, in simpler terms, simply means sharing goodness. Ushiriki Wema's five-year plan of action includes, but is not limited to, the complete renovation of a school in Western Province of hearing impaired children. This is a co-ed boarding school in Western Kenya, serving about 500 pupils. For lack of a better word, the school is poor. They hardly have anything, and it is a boarding school. So it is one of my initiatives to ensure that the entire school is renovated, 
and the children are equipped with all the equipment that they require to make themselves participate in society and to grow into beings who are dignified and can share their, the same experience to those who are coming behind them. I also will up undertake pediatric childcare through the equipping of infant incubators to hospitals across the country. Why did I pick that? In August 2021, we went to the Mwai Kibaki Referral Hospital, which is the Kenyatta National Hospital in Nyeri, and I donated only one incubator. And surprisingly, the whole hospital was happy. They did not, this is a referral hospital, they did not have a single incubator. If a single if a referral hospital cannot have a single incubator, you can imagine what our pediatric wards countrywide are like. So that is something else I've taken upon me, and I hope you will assist in that particular activity. This evening, given the nature of the event and the message I wish to convey, I most respectfully request that you allow me to deviate from traditional protocol and introductions, as my remarks are intended to appeal to your humanity, your heart, regardless of your status in society. Dear friends and distinguished guests, it is with great pleasure and a deep sense of gratitude that I welcome you all here today to celebrate the inauguration of the office of the spouse to the Prime Cabinet Secretary of the Republic of Kenya. I know that name I know that name might be a bit of a mouthful but rest assured the role of the office plays is intended the role that the office will play is intended to be very straightforward contributing to enhancing the standard of living of Kenyans and providing our less fortunate citizens with an opportunity to live a dignified life I am therefore humbled and honored to stand before you all today as it is an immense privilege to serve the people of this country and to represent and be part of the strong, passionate and resilient women who serve the nation of Kenya and its citizens in various capacities like our Madam CS. These roles as spouses serve as a platform for us to promote benevolent initiatives and advocate for issues that are of national social significance. We have a unique opportunity to make a positive impact on our nation and to use our privileged positions and access to our spouses to advance the well-being of our citizens. Many are times when I'm talking, especially to women's groups, I tell them that the spouse of a person in public, most so that of a politician, is nothing more than a messenger. We take the message forward. That's what we are. Ladies and gentlemen, my office is not just a title. It is a call to action. It is an office that seeks to serve no political agenda except that of service to the people. One of the primary roles of my office, too, would be to serve as a role model and advocate for important causes. I aim to bring attention to issues that are not always in the spotlight and to use my voice to effect positive change by establishing initiatives and tirelessly championing causes that matter to our country and her citizens, especially the vulnerable persons within us, by advancing causes that bring dignity to persons living with disability and the elderly, maternal and child health care, protection of the environment for the purpose of food security. I shall work with organizations that share the same values and principles. I plan to ensure that those who need the help, those who need help the most are not forgotten and I intend to inspire others to get involved and create a ripple effect that reaches far beyond the immediate beneficiaries of such initiatives. Last but not least, because of where my dear husband sits, 
lobbying on legislation to favor the physically disabled. And in a nutshell, it is a census of we will be requesting the government, you are the government sitting here today, to do a census of all physically disabled people in the country of Kenya. For only then can you make legislation that will favor them if you have statistics. As we gather here today, I would like to take a moment to talk about the importance of patriotism. Patriotism is the love and loyalty that we have towards our nation. Patriotism is a tool that can inspire prosperity in our country or in any country. Patriotism makes us take pride in our country's achievements and we work towards its progress and success and this creates a sense of national identity. We feel a sense of belonging and unity. This unity can lead to increased productivity, innovations and entrepreneurship all of which contribute to prosperity. Patriotism fosters a sense of responsibility. When we feel a sense of ownership for our country, we take an active role in sharing its future. We take responsibility for our actions and contribute towards the common good. This leads to better governance, greater civic participation, and improved social welfare, all of which contribute to prosperity. Last but not least, patriotism helps to build resilience. When we are patriotic, we come together in times of crisis and work towards a common goal. This can lead to greater social cohesion and a stronger sense of community. As I said, it is my hope that as we raise awareness about these important issues and support communities that are dealing with these challenges, we will also inspire fellow citizens to volunteer their time and resources. This might involve volunteering at local charities and community organizations, providing financial or legal assistance to those in need, and working with local leaders to develop and implement programs that support the community. By highlighting the importance of volunteerism and showcasing the work of volunteers across the country, we can inspire others to get involved and make a difference in their local communities. It is my sincere hope that through this office, my team and I will be able to, to promote positive social change and contribute to improving the lives of the citizens of Kenya. To our guests from beyond our borders, I do acknowledge that this planet does not belong to Kenya exclusively. We share our earth with others. Accordingly, in addition to our domestic work, we hope to foster positive international and regional relations in the national interest through our activities. When an office is created, there's always the question, what will this office look like? What will it serve? What will it achieve? But the one thing that underwrites this kind of an office and the commitments that were shared to us is that Balozi were familiar has chosen to step out of herself, to step out of her immediate family, to make a difference to the Kenyan community. What does this mean for us? I believe it means that when an individual steps up this way, it allows each and every one of us to step out of ourselves and bring the greatest expression to our community. So thank you for giving us this opportunity. The second thing it brought out is we all can make a difference. And as we work to create light for others, in particular those who are really unable to lift themselves, then we light our own way. We make an expression of our highest achievement. So thank you once again for this reminder that this indeed is possible. So going to the cause and to the reasons, children, families, the elderly in the community and persons with disabilities, our hope, our expression and our wish is that your office would connect and promote the well-being of Kenyan citizens. That your office would be like a sunflower, 
so that even on the darkest days, this, your commitment that you have shared, it would enable them to stand tall and find the sunlight that we all need. So congratulations, Your Excellency, and we wish you the very best. Thank you. Enhancing health and emphasis on maternal and child health care, this country has seen a remarkable trajectory over the last 20 years in reducing what were very high rates of maternal and infant mortality. Uh, we were together, Excellency, when we just recently launched the new demographic and health survey. And that was one of the shining things that came out of that, that over 20 years, those rates have halved. They've halved, but they haven't disappeared. And there is still a great deal of work to do to get us the rest of the way. And I'm very excited that you'll be leading us in that. First of all, by focusing on the lives of children and, and families, Mr. Rao, you, you stole my line that children are the future, but that's true, right? This is the future of the country, and if we don't serve our children well, and we don't support our families well, then the country will have no future. Get it right, and the country's future is bright. So, Balozi wa familia is, a, is a, I think, an honor um, that you will have well earned.